So we don't understand what it meant exactly. The way that you know it isn't wrong, it's just that to the church of Laodicea it meant something different. So in this book it talks about this, um, this passage. And if you, yes, okay, so between Laodicea there were two cities, one Colossae, I think that's how it's pronounced at least, and then the other one is Heropolis up here. Um, and in Heropolis they had hot springs, and these hot springs were natural hot springs that could be used for mineral baths or cleaning, and they created calcium deposits and created salt, which was good in its own way. Um, and so this was useful to the church, useful to the people there, to the church there, to just anyone that lived in that city, because it was um, salubrious, which meant it was health-giving or pleasant, and it it just helped them. It was useful to that church or to that city. And in Colossae, the other church there or the other city there, um, they had a fresh water spring, a fresh cold water spring, naturally occurring, um, and it was it was cold. It was refreshing. You could drink it. Um, it was just, it was useful in its own way also. But to get water to the church in Laodicea, they didn't have any naturally occurring water, so they had to have the aqueducts to get them, to get it there. To get water from an aqueduct to another city, especially going that far, it is heating up in the sun or it is cooling off in the air when it's the hot water. And so it, by the time it reaches the church in Laodicea here, the church in Laodicea here, going this far, it it gets warm from the cold water or it gets cold from the hot water. So by the time it gets there, it's lukewarm, which is why Jesus says, if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out. Because if you're hot water, you are useful to my body, to the body of Christ, you're useful to my church. If you are cold water, you are also useful to my church in your own way. You are useful both ways, but since you are lukewarm and you do nothing for the body of Christ, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. So I just thought that was interesting. And so talking about it tonight, um, I'm just going to talk about how to be useful and how not to get spit out of his mouth. So, another passage in Ephesians 4, 29-32. Anyone want to read it? No? Okay, Ashton. He doesn't want you slandering people or brawling with people or speaking out of rage and anger and getting mad and saying curse words or things like this. Um, he wants you to be helpful or useful with your words and doesn't want you to hurt people or bring people down. Um, he wants you to be useful to the body of Christ. In here it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So like Paul does, he was one thing for one person, and another thing for another person, and another thing for another person. He didn't do that just because he's like bipolar or something. He did it because he followed Christ. He did it because he wanted to be useful to Christ, and he did it to help people come to Christ. If he hadn't done that, can you imagine how many people wouldn't have been brought to Christ? How, how many churches there wouldn't be today? How If Christ would even be like a thing in our world because Paul didn't, wasn't useful. So he wants you to be useful with your words, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. So um, yes, I will give chocolate for this question. How can you be useful with your words today, like to, in school, in sports, and etc.? Last 
she was the last one. You can answer another question. I have more. Um, okay. So yes, all all of what you said. Be positive. Build people up. Don't bring them down. Uh, bring them to Christ. Like invite them to church. Like Jamie said, we have empty chairs. Do you see all the empty chairs around you? All the boxes that we had chairs coming. Bring people to church. Invite them to church. We're having to bring a friend night. I think next month is what was said in the leadership meeting. Um, so invite people to that. Bring them to it. It's gonna be fun. It's one of those nights that like you can be useful. You can bring them to church and hype it up for them and then maybe they'll want to come next week, and then next week, and then next week. So going along with this, getting out there, um, next passage is Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Um, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put light light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So, what this one is saying is, it's talking, be useful and don't hide your gifts. Don't hide your spiritual gifts that you have. Don't, if you go out there and you're useful in your sport by showing people that the reason you do it is for God, or the reason that you're so good is for God. Like when you, people make a basket in basketball and they look up and they do that, and, or touchdowns, stuff like that. Tim Tebow over here, and yeah. Um, so just glorify God in what you have. Speak out, teach, sing. You know, Hayden, Fulkerson, wherever you are, he, sing, he gets up here and they sing. Um, Jamie, Kevin, Mike, you all teach. That's your spiritual gift. You, you get out there and you speak, and then Kevin. My Jamie, again, you guys are all, you, you get in with the uh, new people. You, you come and you're, you're welcoming and you do all this. That's your spiritual gift. You're being useful. You, you're not hiding it. You're the salt and light of the earth. You're, you're not putting it under a lamp. You're being useful to the people that need it. So then you're, you're out here and you do all this. You're showing Christ. Um, Uh, so you're doing all this, you're showing people Christ, and I use examples like Kevin, Mike, and Jamie, but they have, they have jobs here. That's their spiritual gift, and I'm not saying that you want to do it because it's their job. They obviously love Christ, you can see that in their actions. But in school every day, in sports, and your extracurricular activities, how can you do that in your life? How can you, how can you be the salt and light of the earth and not hide it? Like you, like, I know it's so easy to do, because I, I struggle with that, too. I want to hide it. I don't, I don't want to be the, the Jesus freak or the, the kid that doesn't go to the parties because he, he thinks it's bad because he's a Christian. But how can you, actual question, how can you step out there and be useful for the salt and light of the earth? Actual question. And this answer. I'll do what I did last time and not keep going. Do the question again. Um, what can we do to be useful with our deeds and be the salt and the light of the earth? Get out there and show yourselves and not just be hidden, hide yourself under a bowl and be thrown in the dirt. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Anyone else? One more. Jackson? No matter, like, no matter who it is, just create a relationship. There you go. Maybe that'll reach. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Be kind to people. Love them. Love them who they are. Just, um, be useful. Be, be loving. Be kind. Um, be the salt. Be the light. Um, okay. Now I have a video because you guys are starting to fall asleep. It looks like. Luke. You can turn off the lights too. Oh, you have to have sound. No, you have to restart the video now.
I guess you don't entertain much, do you? I like my privacy. You know I do too. That's another thing we have in time. Like I hate it when you got somebody in your face, you try to give them a hint, they won't leave. Then there's that big awkward silence, you know. <laughs> Can I stay with you? Can I stay with you? Can I stay with you? Please. Of course. Really? No. Please. I don't want to go back there. You don't know what it's like. Maybe you do, but that's why we gotta stick together. You gotta let me stay, please, oh, please. Okay, okay. But good night. Oh, hey, hey, uh, we get the stuff. Oh, it's gonna be fun. We can stay late. It's what the man is starting in the morning. She was saving 
her master's life, even though she was being beaten. She got beat three times and still, every single time, saved Balaam's life. She could have just thrown him off or thrown him straight to the angel. And God even says, I would have struck you down, but I wouldn't have left the donkey be. I would have let it go on. He wouldn't have killed him. And so he, the donkey is being persecuted. He's being, she's being struck, she's being beaten, she's being, even though she's being useful, Balaam doesn't realize that, but he, he doesn't trust her. He, just like sometimes people don't trust Christians to, to bring them to Christ, even if they're being useful. Um, they persecute them, they beat them, or like in the, in the Bible, they, they stone them. Like Paul, he, he was being useful in the body of Christ, he was bringing people to Christ, he was creating a ton of churches, but yet people beat him, they stoned him, they whipped him, they flogged him or something. They put him in jail, and eventually he, he died, they killed him, but um, he yet went through all of this persecution because he believed in what he was, he was teaching, he believed in it, he was being useful, he knew what was going to come out of his being useful, and that is being with the Lord in heaven, going to heaven, not being spit out of Jesus' mouth, going to hell, or dying, even though he did die, he went up to heaven, he didn't just get thrown into hell because he died. He was being useful no matter what he had done. God forgave him, just like we're supposed to do with our words. We're supposed to forgive like just like God did and with our words and help people with our words just like Paul was doing. But even if we're persecuted, just like in the Middle East with ISIS or all those all terrorist groups that are hurting Christians and beating Christians or beheading Christians, we are still supposed to be Christians. We are supposed to be useful to Christ and bring them, bring them to the church and be one church of God. Um, no matter if they don't like what we're saying, no matter if it's banned like it is in other countries around the world, just like um, Kevin went to China, he, it, it's not really allowed there, like they don't, they don't want that being taught, but he, he still went and he was being useful, and um, Garrett went to China, they don't, they, you can be persecuted there, and persecuted in many different places that we have missionaries going from this church. And yet they're going because they know what the outcome is. No matter how many people persecute them, no matter if they if they do get beaten or if they do, for some reason they, they do get killed, they know what the outcome is. They know that they're going to heaven. They know that they want people to go to heaven, even if it means them losing their life. They want people to come to go to heaven. And because they don't want to wish hell on anyone, no matter what they're doing, even if they're the ones persecuting them. Just like Balaam's donkey, she... Even though she was beaten, she didn't let him die. She still crushed his foot and got beaten again. She still laid it down on him and got beaten again. No matter what was happening, she still was trying to be useful and save his life, just like we're called to do. We are called to be useful in school, in sports, and even in church. You might get persecuted at church, and that's horrible, but it, it still might happen. Um, you can be... Uh, people won't be your friend because you're a Jesus freak, or they won't invite you to parties anymore, or you might be in the, um, not in that certain clique or social group because you're a Christian, you're weird, or um, you don't do the same things we do. But, and that's, that's persecution. It might not be as extreme as getting beaten or executed, but it's still persecution. Um, but, and you can still be useful to that. You can still show them love, you can forgive what they're doing, and still invite them to church, or still just... Show them love, even if they're hitting you. Turn them the cheek and be useful. Forgive them. I'm not saying let people beat you, but um, just be useful to that cause. So, this question is, you don't have to answer it. I'm just going to leave you with this question. What can you do in your life, in school, in church, in sports and band and choir and whatever you do in your life, no matter what it is, what can you do in your life to be useful for Christ, to show your light, to, sh to be the salt of the earth, not hide your hide the city on a hill. You can't hide a city on a hill, so don't hide your, your belief. What can you do to build someone up instead of bring them down in your life and be useful to the body of Christ so that you are not spit out of Jesus' mouth? Quick, I just wanted to say to you guys real quick, I think of William King.
I think of uh, Braxton Tempest, Nathan Lawley, like well, I could keep saying names. Parker Smith did this earlier. A lot of um, guys will pursue and say, hey, I want to teach. And that is obviously a way to be useful using your spiritual gifts. Um, but, you know, not everybody has that gift or has that opportunity. And so I wanted to say, if you watch people like Nathan, it isn't just when they get a platform to be on stage uh, that then they're useful for Christ. And those of you sitting down there aren't useful. That's not what the point of his lesson tonight was. Um, I think of Nathan always being consistently with you know Peyton and other people at the Jack every Thursday to encourage any Jinx students, um, just to introduce them to a youth group. Being consistent is a way you use your spiritual gift. And this guy never gossips about anyone. He's so positive about everyone. And I think Nathan doesn't need a teaching platform stage to be useful for Christ. And so I would say to you guys, Think about William King when he came up to me and was like, hey, I want to teach. And we're like, yes, do it. Um, but then you don't always have to have a youth minister to be useful for Christ. I think that's what Nathan was trying to say. You have that capability with the Holy Spirit within you to just step up and, and encourage. Step up and be a joy and a depressing you know, atmosphere. Um, so thank you, Nathan, for showing the example that we can be useful in platforms like this, but more the way you live. Um, let's grab a hand. I want to pray over Nathan. And then, um, Jamie, Kelsey, Kevin, do we have anything else after this prayer? All right, then you guys have a lot of time to hug and maybe play in the boxes like Eli Swain did. Um, so, okay, well, let's, let's pray. God, our Father, thank you so much that um, you show up in a burning bush and you appear to us um, even, even like David, just going down the line of all these brothers, and they, they didn't have what you were looking for. You wanted something different in, in people like Moses and David. And Sometimes our clothes are, are a little raggedy, and we are a little shorter and less strong and less appealing from a worldly standpoint, but you still choose us. Uh, you still chose Saul and turned him into Paul. And God, you have uh, decided to raise up Nathan Lawley. Um, and God, Nathan wanted to humbly share your word, knowing that it's not about him, it's about Christ and about making this life that we're given just to be an outpouring of thanksgiving and gratitude for Jesus' death on the cross for us. So thank you for Nathan's example tonight of being courageous and teaching your word. Um, but help the teens and the adults in this room to heed your word and Nathan's message that we are all supposed to stand out and not hide this light that you've put within us, but um, to always remember that the Holy Spirit, you're dwelling within us, and you want to accomplish great things. You want us to go without fear through the water like Moses did, and uh, out of the lion's den like Daniel. Um, God, you're with us, and we trust you. You're our God, and you will deliver us. God, thank you for being with Nathan. Speak your truth tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, get your hugs.